Hey, good morning, Dr. Goldberg. Uh, continuing our internal medicine uh, bullet points. Uh, today we're going to talk about the differential diagnosis of eosinophilia. Uh, very straightforward mnemonic for this uh, NAACP. So N stands for neoplasm. Uh, you see high eosinophils on a differential diagnosis of a CBC. You should think about an occult neoplasm, uh, especially uh, hematological uh, malignancies, lymphomas, uh, those types of tumors. Uh, A stands for allergies. Allergies, of course, is going to account for 90% of eosinophilia. So uh, we'll frequently see people who uh, have environmental allergies or atopic dermatitis, chronic eczema with uh, an elevation of their eosinophils. The second A stands for Addison's disease. So uh, the antithesis of prednisone use or, you know, too much steroid, uh, lack of steroids or Addison's causes eosinophilia. That's why prednisone is such a good drug to uh, for allergies because it causes eosinopenia. So remember Addison's disease. C stands for collagen vascular disease, such as uh, vasculitis, uh, any of the vasculitis, temper vasculitides, uh, temporal arteritis, Wegner's granulomatosis, leukocytoclastic vasculitis, uh, whatever size blood vessel uh, can cause, be associated with eosinophilia. And finally, P stands for parasite, but primarily here we're talking about worm infections, whether it's roundworm, uh, trematode infections, fluke infections, uh, classically uh, is associated with eosinophilia. Uh, so if somebody, uh, you see somebody in the clinic and they've got, uh, maybe if they're immigrated or uh, coming from someplace like Mexico and they've got eosinophilia, you should think about uh, some type of a worm uh, infection. So that's kind of a, a quick uh, mnemonic for eosinophilia. Uh, I'd like you to know it, you know, by the end of our rotation. Thank you. Dr. Galbraith signing off.